Right now, live and wow, there is a massive buff to XP and rep that celebrates the D4 launch. It's called Winds of Sanctuary, and every source of XP in the whole game is increased by 50% from now until the 10th of July, which is probably just before patch 10.1.5 will drop. It's also going to be a 50% rep buff for everything other than the new Loam Renown, so this really is the perfect time to get all your old Renown levels sorted. So, here's everything that you need to know to abuse the hell out of this glorious time period, and even some what-to-do things for leveling and maxing your renown so that you can actually get the most out of all of this. Just like how you get the most out of what we do over on Patreon, where, if you happen to be doing some leveling, I've got four new episodes of the Lore Walking podcast that have came out recently. So that's over four hours of real damn high quality uh, lore content for you to listen to. In addition to that, we got a kick-ass new month of loot, early access videos, and a whole bunch more. It is the best place to support what we do. And in return for that, you got a bunch of cool shit. All right, let's go. First, the XP buff. If you want anything leveled, now is your chance. And not just because of the buff. Also, it happens to be time walking week right now. And trust me, time walking is one of the easiest, laziest ways to level in Dragonflight. But unfortunately, as of Dragonflight, it's no longer a low level activity. Actually, you've uh, got to be level 60 to start it. So, fantastic for any tunes left untouched since the Shadowlands. But... I think we got to talk about how we can get up to level 60 ASAP first, but only after I talk about how you can get more than the already insane 50% XP. If you are an active player in Battle for Azeroth, then check your characters for these. If you've got these lying around, you'll probably be able to buy some Drafts of the Ten Lands. These are an hour-long 10% XP potion that's account-wide, right? Or at least the, the item is account-wide, so you can buy a stack of them and send them over to your alts. Just try not to die, because if you do, you lose the buff. Then there's also War Mode for an extra 10 to 20%. Now, that's great while questing. Of course, you can get killed because there's PvP, but I have found that with how aggressive sharding is, usually war mode, uh, if you're leveling, usually the other people who've got it turned on have got it turned on for leveling, and they're often not interested in combat. For more specific tips, of course, make sure you've got all the heirlooms uh, that you can get, uh, level them up as far as you can afford, purchase the heirloom maps for each of the continents that you're going to be going in, because having the flight masters will save you a whole bunch of time and effort, um, of course, before you can mount up yourself. Okay, on to the how then. The most efficient and lazy way is to do dungeons. TBC dungeons are considered to be the fastest, with Wrath and Cataclysm just below that. That means you'll want to start with TBC for queue times and general speed, and then swap to the others once you've exhausted all of the dungeon quests. That being said, a lot comes down to whatever will make you want to stick with things and power through, so obviously change it up if you start getting bored. Of course, dungeons will be best if you are a tank or a healer, you'll get those pretty much instant cues. If you're a DPS, be prepared to just do some questing in between your, uh, in between your waiting times. In that case, you should still stick to TBC Wrath and Kata. Mist is fine overall, and Warlords of Draenor is extremely fast quest-wise, but the dungeons there are kind of abysmal for XP. And that leads me to questing in general instead of dungeons. This is uh, faster minute for minute if you have the right route and approach, but it's also quite a active experience. Now for the Alliance, the fastest zones to go through are mostly the Cataclysm ones via Chromie time. So Red Ridge, Duskwood, Loch Modan, the likes of those net you an absolute ton of levels in barely any time. Seriously, Loch Modan is insanely fast fast, especially too if you have rare scanner or silver dragon installed and you kill those rares that pop up while you quest, because those questing rares actually drop like near a quest worth of experience. You should absolutely kill them when you see them. It also helps, of course, that those zones are quite close to Stormwind, which makes accessing them easy. If you're wondering uh, when I'm going to mention the Warlords of Draenor intro, uh, good thinking, it's now. The WAD intro, as well as the first handfuls of quests in each of Shadowmoon Valley, Spires of Arrak, Talador, and Gorgrond are extremely fast. So with those zones, if you're questing with 50% bonus XP, another 10 to 20% for war mode, and the 10% XP potion, you'll probably hit 60 well before you finish most of the stuff that I've talked about. Also, one thing to note, if you're not aware, once you're in any chromie time, the whole world will scale. 
So unless you want to switch which dungeons you uh, queue for, you don't need uh, to switch when questing. Except for if you want or need the lead-in quest, uh, like say you do for Warlords of Draenor. Over for the Horde, those Warlord zones are still absolutely fantastic, but for pure speed, you actually might want to start with Silver Pine Forest and Hillsbrad. They are speedy to the point of being insane, a little bit less accessible uh, to Orgrimmar, right? And it's only two zones rather than the Alliance's three turbo fast ones, uh, but that's no big deal. These are still fantastic, and you can just take the portal to Silvermoon, which is in Orgrimmar, and then the Orb of Translocation from there to get to the Undercity, which does make getting there reasonably fast. Another way to approach this, though, is to look at your Lore Walker uh, achievements and just to target the zones that you haven't finished for that. You may as well, and uh, the World of Warcraft's actually quite neat. As for 60 through 70, that is dead easy uh, time walking, right? That's it. A few hours of mop time walking, which you can do right now, nuking those dungeons at light speed, and it will be done. DPS queues aren't great, but they're usually not terrible, so don't worry too much and uh, just level, of course, via quests in between. Of course, remember, you can get a level from crafting as well. Usually going from 69 to 70 is the most efficient because of how the XP scales, uh, but honestly, I just find it easier to queue up for another two dungeons. Uh, the chance at level 69 and 70 uh, scaled up uh, gear from the time walking reward does feel kind of worth it uh, to me. That being said, the first time craft bonuses, they may be impacted by the XP event, which would certainly make them very speedy indeed. Now, if you do want to quest or do something while you're waiting for your queues, you can just do a bunch of events and world quests. Uh, questing properly though, so doing the campaign and the side quests at full speed, is actually extremely fast, so definitely feel free to do that as well. Your heirlooms can scale up to level 70 as well, so... You can upgrade those if you feel like you need the power boost, but obviously they're heirlooms, they're pretty expensive. Overall then, I recommend time walking if you want speed and some practice at dungeon content. Uh, of course, you'll also get some time walking badges, which could get you some initial gear to get you started off once you hit max level, but that's not even that important because you get so much gear so quickly whenever you do the introduction quest line to patch 10.1. Otherwise, regular dungeons in Dragonflight are a lot slower than questing, but once you pick up some dungeon quests at the end of a zone's campaign, doing that can be a decent bump. Also, a massive shout out to Haldan for making a lot of uh, this info public. Uh, as the current uh, record holder for leveling speed, his guides are, well, unparalleled if pure raw speed is your goal, and I'd highly recommend checking out his videos and website. I wouldn't necessarily recommend following that unless going turbo for speed and that sort of thing is what you want to do and you really want to enjoy it from a speedrunner's mindset rather than to just enjoy uh, the story, especially if it's a zone you've not done. And on the topic of leveling, here's a section about that. Most of it comes down to add-ons and vibes. I would say turn off anything that you don't need, turn your ambience uh, up, turn on the music. You don't need your damage meter, your dungeon weak auras, or basically anything on your screen except your core class abilities. And if you want to go fast, Leatrix Plus has the auto accept and turn in sorted. And if you want the opportunity to get some reading in, an add-on called Immersion is the best way to enjoy that when questing. And that's basically it. I'd recommend turning off every UI element you don't need uh, via edit mode. Be a little bit more zoomed in so you can actually see the details because turns out, They've actually made quite a lot, and it's easy to miss it in a soup of UI. And if you're wondering what to level, there's definitely a few relevant picks. If you've not hopped in the Paladin rework train, now is the absolute perfect time to do so. Same goes to a lesser degree with Shadow Priest, obviously then the Augmentation Evoker. It's not in the game yet, and it won't be until this event is over, but if you do want to get your Evoker to max level, now is also your chance. There's also a pretty tasty Mage rework coming up in patch 10.1.5, if that tickles your fancy. Uh, reports from PTR are mostly positive, so that could be something to level up as well. If you want something that you know will be good, then check out this video we did on patch 10.1's best specs. Okay, 50% XP is great, but what about 50% extra rep? The best thing to do with this crazy rep buff is to max out all your renowns, unlocking the story content, and then getting all those cosmetics you may be behind on. And there's a few ways to go about that. Uh, before that, there's something important to remember. Every day in the Forbidden Reach, you can pick up a 10% rep buff for one of the four main renowns. 
You can't change this once it's lifted, but you can just pick a new one up the next day. This lets you, of course, target the ones that you're a bit more behind on, which uh, I think is probably going to be Tuscar for most people. Also, quick tip, if you unlock the way gate here, you can make traveling to the reach super easy. Uh, you can just do that, get the buff, do your renowned dailies there, and then hearth back uh, to the main aisles to do whatever you need to do. Make sure you at least pick up that buff, though, before you do anything else. Okay, for tips then, the first is probably the most efficient, but only if you haven't uh, done it before, and that is the side quests. The side quests in Dragonflight reward you with a massive amount of reputation. If you have any left, just get them done. And if you're not sure, you can get an excellent add-on called BTW Quests. This basically marks things on your map. It's even got a nice little UI showing you what quests are left to be done. Otherwise, your best bet is to do the usual weekly events for Renown and any world quests uh, that are tagged with them. So the Siege and the Rathian Sibelian uh, dailies for Valdrakan Accord and the Community Feast and Fishing Hole dailies for Ascara, the Rand Hunt and Alig bi-weeklies for the Maruk Centaur, and then all the dailies for the Dragonscale Expedition. And also for Dragonscale, if you haven't picked up all the flags yet, certainly picking them up now with 50% rep will get you a humongous infusion. And as you do all this, you'll get those various different trophies and uh, rep items. Turn those in, but turn them in when you've got the 10% buff up for that faction. Other than that, uh, you've got world quests to do, and for the Ascara, if you're obscenely rich, you can just buy a whole bunch of fish and do the fish hand-ins. Uh, generally, though, doing two world quest clears each week for the next month should get you an absolute ton with absolutely minimal effort. Now, if you're hyper low on time, the most efficient things to do would be the events, but also these two quests. Uh, the weekly aiding the accord one gives a whole bunch of rep and the weekly dungeon quest that gives, uh, well, to do five heroics, that gives a lot as well. So if you can knock those out, getting the buff on top is real nice. And if you're already high on your renown or you just want something else, remember there are a few more reps in Dragonflight to crack on with. We've got the Winter Pelt rep grind, which is basically grinding out mob drops for a cute little quest line, then the Rathi and Sibelian stuff from launch, and also the Cobalt Assembly. And beyond that, remember, this reputation buff is to everything in the game, which is really good. So go through all of the old reps and actually take a look to see what sorts of things you're interested in. I mean, the 50% boost, I know that that makes the likes of the Netherwing reputation from the Burning Crusade super, super quick to do. So really with this, there's a whole host of gameplay and a massive opportunity for you to catch up on so much that you have missed in the past. As much as we maybe see a World of Warcraft patch as being an isolated thing that's just gone once it's no longer the current patch, all of those reps still exist. All of their dailies and stories still exist. And if you do them now with 50% uh, buff, you will have so much less grind to get all the same rewards and uh, have a pretty decent experience. Okay, that's it. Go have fun. We've got just shy of a month of turbo speed within World of Warcraft, which I think is just the shot of adrenaline that the game needs. All right, that's it for me. By the way, I'll be doing Rat Paladin as my number one check-in and then maxing out all my renown on my main. All right, have a good one. Enjoy. Thank you.